Hey guys, Dave here again. Uh, so what we're going to do now is we just open the box. If you skip to this portion, welcome. We're just going to do the rares and mythics uh, that we opened. We're, I didn't put them in order, so we're just going to go over them, kind of what I think of them, uh, and we'll go from there. All right, so our first one is easy. This is our buy a box promo. It is Skyship Stalker, two generic and two red for a 3-3 flyer that has, uh, for one red, you it gets plus one plus oh until end of turn, you as many times as you want. For a red, you can, it gains first strike until end of turn, or for a red, it gains haste until end of turn. I think this could see play in competitive standard. Obviously, limited, sealed, bomb, do it, just do it. Uh, competitive standard, just because for five mana, it's a 3-3 flyer, and then every turn after that, uh, as a defender, it can gain first strike and get as big as you want for as much uh, red mana as you have open. So I definitely can see it can be kind of the top end in a sort of a red, red black or red green and guest aggressive deck. So I really like that one. That was our buy box promo. Uh, we also got a territorial gorger. There's a three generic mana and a red. You get a two two trample. Whenever you get uh, one or more energy, uh, territorial gorger gets plus two plus two until end of turn. So the example in the full case opening that, or not case box, <laughs> didn't buy a case, uh, that we went over was there is the artifact that whenever a creature enters, you gain an energy. So if I play something that has Fabricate 2, the main creature enters, and then I get the two servos. So from that, I gain, I have three separate events of gaining energy. So for this one, that sees it as three separate events of gaining energy. So one, one event gets plus two plus two, second event gets plus two plus two, third event gets plus two plus two. So it would become an 8-8 trample with those two cards. I know it's a three card combo, all that, but still has potential to be really, really good. Just because it has potential to be really, really good, because energy uh, is going to be a... I think especially with Aether Revolt out, it's going to be a big thing. So uh, I will kind of do these all as a bunch, but we did get uh, Botanical Sanctum, Blooming Marsh, Spire Bluff Canal, uh, and Concealed Courtyard. So we got four of the new fast lands. So each of these uh, enter the battlefield tapped unless you control two or fewer other lands. So if your first, your first, second, or third land of the game, they enter the battlefield uh, untapped. So and they, of course, each blue-green, green-black, red-blue, and black-white. So all of these are just going to be playable 100% in all formats uh, if you're playing both of these colors. So just good cards are good. I saw a few people uh, saying, just go up there, pre-order four of each one, just do it, just now. Um, because they're gonna go up in price. The difference with this compared to Scar's Block when the original Fastlands came out, because of the inventions, um, and because it's gonna be, I think it's just a really popular set in general, uh, so much of this set is gonna be open, like Magic is more popular than it used to be. So much of this set is gonna be opened that I'll maybe hold off for a little bit on these guys. Get what you get when you open them, but don't go crazy just buying them. Like, maybe five, I think they're five bucks-ish. Five to eight dollars a piece. But, like, the original Scars line, some of them push up to almost twenty dollars. I'm in Canada, obviously. It's the map. Um, so that pushes those up to fifteen to twenty dollars for the more expensive ones. But I would say hold off on these uh, just until, like, you buy whatever cards you can get. Like, I bought a couple boxes. Buy whatever cards you can get, see what you get, and then maybe fill up if you only have to get a couple more, but... I didn't pre-order just because so much of it was going to be bought. I'm going to hold off for a little bit. See, but those are the four lands that we, four rare lands that we opened, the four fast lands. Uh, we got Insidious Will. So for two generic and two blue, you can cast an incident that says choose one, counter target spell, or you may choose new target for uh, target spell, or copy target instant or sorcery spell, you may choose new targets for the copy. Uh, cryptic Command, this is not, obviously. Uh, I think it's trying to be, but it's doing a fairly poor impression. If this was one more generic mana and said choose two, it would be so much better. But I just really think it's too much, like it's too expensive for it to counter spell. It gives you options, options are always good, but I just don't think any of the options are that good. Uh, so I don't know if this will see play. Okay. Yeah. I like it, I wish it could, uh, but I don't know. So we also got Midnight Oil. Yeah, I know. Not a great pack so far. The four lands is good, but not so far. Uh, Midnight Oil is two generic uh, mana and two black for enchantment. Midnight Oil enters the battlefield with seven uh, hour counters on it. At the beginning of your draw step, draw an additional card uh, and remove two hour counters from Midnight Oil. Your minimum, uh, your, sorry, your maximum hand size is equal to the number of hour counters on Midnight Oil. Whenever you discard a card, you lose one life. 
so how does it work? So I play this pass turn, comes back to me. Uh, at the beginning of my upkeep, I draw an initial turn, the counter does go down to five. So I draw two cards, I now have however many cards in my hand, this goes down to five, my maximum hand size is five. Next turn, draw two more cards, my max hand size is three. Next turn, draw two more cards, my max hand size is one. At that point, I really want a harmless gift tip, or harmless offering, I think it's called, if to somebody else, maybe even with three card or three counters up on it. That's the only thing, unless there's something I'm really missing, that's the only way I see this going anywhere. Um, is the harmless gift that when it down, it's down to a couple counters. Same as the uh, demonic pact card. You want to use the good modes and then try and give it away and make somebody else lose, right? So I don't see it seeing competitive, it fringe competitive play uh, just because of that, just because it's real weird ability. Next up, I have Syndicate Trafficker. So generic and a black for a 3 1 Aetherborn Rogue. It has one generic, sacrifice, and artifact, but a plus one plus one counter on it. Uh, and on Syndicate Trafficker, it gains Indestructible into the unfair. So, in your aggressive black deck, this is going to be your rare. This is a 3-1 that doesn't come in tapped. There's another one that comes in tapped for the same cost. 3-1 that comes in tapped. Um, this is going to be Indestructible, so it's going to be good on the defense if you get pushed on your heels in that aggressive deck. Uh, it's going to be good on the aggressive because obviously you can just keep tapping for... Keep, attack, keep attacking for 3-3-3-4-4 three, 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 four, four, because they're going to try to block a couple times because a servo trades with this. I don't think it'll see, that's how you would use it, but I don't think it'll see competitive play, really. I don't see it, because I want my artifacts to do things. Either I'm going wide with servos, or I am like have Panharmonicon, or oh, no, there are artifacts out that I want to do stuff. I don't know about this guy, unfortunately. Uh, we have Fateful Showdown. For two generic and two red, you get an instant. It says Fateful Showdown deals damage to target creature or player, equal to the number of cards in your hand. Discard all the cards in your hand, then draw that many cards. So you're playing this on turn four, unless you ramp. Uh, that's just, I don't see it doing a lot. Unless you're in the red deck, you got a couple lands in your hand, you discard those, do two to something. I don't know. I don't see it personally, but it's a story card, the emblem here. We have the uh, MTG story card. So at mtgstory.com to check out the story for Kaladesh if you want to do that. But I don't see it going anywhere, unfortunately. Uh, this one, as well as... Talk about Paradox Love Comes. Um, it is three generic mana and a blue for an instant that says return any number of target non-land, non-token permanents you control to their owner's hands. Draw a card for each card returned to your hand this way. Okay. I don't know. The only way I see this doing anything is, okay, at the end of your turn, I have eight servos and orthopters out. I'm going to blink the two guys that had Fabricate back to my hand, draw two cards, replay the two Fabricate guys, make more stuff. In standard, that's the only thing I see it doing. Maybe in older formats, it goes somewhere, does something, but I, I don't know. if Maybe I just don't have the head for this one, guys. Uh, sorry, but that's what I got for that guy. I'm uh, getting a little better. Eliminate the competition is four generic mana and a black sorcery. As an additional cost to cast Eliminate the competition, sacrifice X creatures, destroy X target creatures. Important thing to note, if this gets counters, since it says add as an additional cost, uh, sacrifice those creatures, you still have to sacrifice those creatures. Um, just a little, then my pre-release ran into an issue with that one from someone else, but... Uh, so I think this will see standard, just like I was saying, for the other guy. So if, say if I have two or three servos up, just from Fabricate or have making anything like that where I have just little dudes that aren't affecting the board anymore, they each become bombs, right? I'm going to sacrifice those, blow up, you're fatty, you're fatty, you're fatty, right? Um, of course, this is, it's a little bit magical Christmas land. In standard, you're always going to be playing efficient stuff, but you can trade your less, slightly less efficient stuff for their big bomb threats that they play, hopefully, right? Um, I, think you'll see, I think you'll see a little bit of standard competitive play. Um, because it's, it's a real efficient removal spell, you can kill a bunch of things with it, but it requires you to have some things as well, so... Yeah, but I, I like it. Uh, we have the Rare Module. This is one generic mana for Animation Module. It is an artifact that whenever one or more plus one plus one counters are placed on a permanent you control, you may pay one. If you do, create a 1-1 one, one colorless servo artifact creature token. For three generic mana and a tap, choose a counter on target permanent or player, give that permanent or player another counter of that kind. So, proliferate, but not everywhere, you just get targeted proliferate. 
Um, I really hope the animation cycle sees play, because I really want it to. So there's this one, and there's two, I think the other two are on commons, because uh, they don't want you to draft it, really, so they make it uncommon and rare. So this one uh, gets you a 1-1 one -one if you pay one. The other one says when something uh, creature enters, you get an energy. And another one says when you get an energy, you can put a counter on something. So this one, when you put a counter on something, you pay one, make a creature. So the whole loop, for one mana, you get a creature, get an energy, get a counter. So the whole loop, that costs, loop costs you one mana. You can repeat that, repeat that, repeat that, for as much mana as you have, if you have all three modules out. I really hope that sees standard play, because I just, I, I like that. I like it when they put those multiple things together. Um, like when they, a long time, I think it was M15, they had like Festering Newt, and the Witch, and Bubbling Cauldron, and if you had them all out, it became really, really good, but you had to get them all out, so. Uh, next card is Dubious Challenge. This feels like a trap. Uh, Dubious Challenge is three generic and a green for sorcery. Uh, look at the top ten cards of your library. Before. You're like, oh my goodness, this is Clank Company, but so much better. No, it's not. Uh, exile up to two, car two creature cards from among them. Then shuffle your library. Target opponent may choose one of the exiled cards and put it onto the battlefield under his or her control. Put the rest onto the battlefield under your control. So you pick two creatures, and less of the exact same creature, your opponent's just going to get the better one. You know, um, like what I what I would enjoy doing with this is uh, getting two of those the mythic demons. Uh, they give minus two, minus two, and just pick two of those. Everything's getting minus four, minus four. Go ahead, right? Uh, but yeah, I just don't see this being good enough because it gives your opponent the better choice. So I think it will not see any play, unfortunately. Again, I'm not a guru by any means, but that's my opinion on that one. Uh, then have Lath New Hellion. So for two generic and a red mana, you get a creature Hellion that is a 4-4 with haste. Uh, whenever it enters the battlefield, you get two energy. Okay, cool. Energy. Uh, at the beginning of your end step, sacrifice Lunar uh, Lathun, sorry, Hellion, unless you pay two energy. This again, I feel, is a little bit of a trap unless you're paying a big, playing a big energy deck. Because what I think is going to happen most of the time with this is, okay, it's going to enter, I get two energy, I attack you. Okay, cool, maybe you block, maybe you take four, whatever. If you block, okay, you lose the thing, okay. I pay two energy, I'll keep it. Okay, you play something, maybe you hit me back, whatever. So I'll untap, I'm going to attack you again. Okay, so you just lost something else. Uh, I don't have any energy anymore, sacrifice instead. I feel like that's going to happen a lot with this guy, so I'm not a big fan. Uh, of course, if you're playing a big energy deck, you can keep him around, it's going to be really good, but you have to have, just in sealed, if you don't have a lot of energy, don't play this guy, and draft. You can definitely draft like a big energy deck and make surround him with cards that make him a lot better. Uh, but it's going to take some crafty drafting, but I don't think this is going to see any significant play out unless, unless there's a big energy deck out there. Uh, next card is real good, is Fumigate. This is three generic for and two white for a sorcery that says destroy all creatures. You gain one life for each creature destroyed this way. This is our board white. Um, if you're in white, it's a real good card. If you're not in white, fear this card. Uh, against those token decks, if you're playing against those, you're going to get a bunch of life. Um, I really like this card. It's going to see standard play as long as it's in the standard. So be prepared to play against this one if you play in any kind of standard formats. I don't know if it'll go anywhere past that. Uh, gaining life is always a good turn. Uh, good, sorry, it could buy you a turn with, with it, as much life as it gains. But uh, standard, definitely see it going in there. This is just your board wipe right now. Uh, next card, Cultivator's Caravan. It's three generic mana. Yeah, these are in no particular order. Uh, Cultivator's Caravan. For three generic mana, you get an artifact vehicle that says tap, add one mana of any color to your mana pool. If you crew it for three, it turns into a 5-5. Five five. Um, this guy I like. If it sees standard play, it's going to be not as a playset, um, just as maybe a two of, that you, basically, if this is in your deck, you have to be okay just playing it as a mana rock. Because um, crew three is one of the higher crew costs. If I'm playing a vehicle deck, I want to be more aggressive and play crew, play crews one and two. Um, but that being said, like this guy, if you're playing the ramp artifact, like a ramp vehicle, maybe up to Emrakul deck, this guy could definitely get you there. Um, because it just helps you against some mid-range decks that are playing 4-4s, four because it turns your little dudes to play your rampy dudes in the start into a 5-5 five five that can block and just kill their stuff. But like I said, I don't think it's going to see significant standard play. Um, like, not as a play set in every top 8 from here till rotation. Um, 
I think it'll I think it'll get there. Uh, just as a one or two of in some decks. Uh, next card is me Giraper Orori. Orori. Uh, it's an artifact. Each player may play an additional land on each of his or her turns at the beginning of each player's upkeep. And that player, uh, if that player has no cards in hand, that player draws three cards. Um, so, if you can play this <laughs> with Midnight Oil, this is a good combo. If you can give this to your opponent somehow, harmless offering it. Or, but other than that, uh, it's going to be a commander card. Really good commander card. I play commander. I enjoy it. Uh, it's probably definitely going in there, especially in those uh, mechanics with Commander decks where you want to punish your opponent for discarding cards, right? Or even drawing cards. Um, but just because it's kind of a, a group hug thing, that's not like everybody can play additional land, everybody gets to draw cards, it's just not something you want to play in standard, probably. Our Metalwork Colossus is our next card. It's 11 generic mana. Don't worry, that gets lower. Uh, for an artifact creature construct, it is a 10 10. Uh, it costs X less, where X is the total converted mana cost of non-creature artifacts you control. Sacrifice two artifacts, uh, return it from your graveyard to your hand. So if we have gear per ornery out, and we have a metal word Colossus in our hand, this is four, so we had 11 minus four, this costs seven. So seven mana for a 10-10 is good. Um, if there's a very heavy artifact-centric deck, I can see the same play, uh, because anytime recently, whether it's been Delve, whether it's been Emerge, we've seen cost-reducing mechanics uh, be popular. Whether it was Emerge, Delve, what have you. Those mechanics have made cards seen play. This has that in a set with a lot of artifacts anyway. So if you're playing vehicles, you have three vehicles out, maybe six mana. This guy only costs five for a 10-10. Seems good. Speaking of vehicles, we have Depala Pilot Exemplar. It's a generic mana, a red and a white for a legendary creature dwarf, Pilot 3-3. Three, three. So good stats already. Three mana for a three three. Uh, other dwarves you control get plus one plus one. Cool. Uh, that's probably not the biggest thing though. Uh, with this card, each vehicle you control gets plus one plus one as long as it's a creature. Because of course, it's not a creature. Doesn't have toughness or uh, power. Uh, the big thing is the ability. Whenever the pilot pilot exemplar becomes tapped, whether it's to attack or to crew vehicle, uh, or for another reason, you may pay X. So if your opponent taps her with something in like a draft or sealed, you can do this as well. You may pay X. If you do, reveal the top X cards of your library. Put all dwarf and vehicle cards from among them into your hand. Then put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. All of them. So, red-white vehicle deck with this guy, or this girl, and vehicles, and they all get plus one plus one, and it's good. And you get all of them. Seems good. I don't know what else to tell you. It's a good card. Uh, if there is a vehicle deck, this will be in it, 100%. Uh, actually, I have one of my uh, card, cards I like from the set. Uh, Kimball, a council, uh, Consul of Allocation, is a generic, a white, and a black for a legendary creature, human advisor, 2-3. Whenever an opponent casts a non-creature spell, that player loses 2 life and you gain 2 life. I'm currently trying to make a white, black, blinky, um, gear hulk deck. Um, so with this guy, it just, if my opponent wants to kill something, it's going to punish them. Uh, in Commander, it's going to be awesome, obviously. Uh, this can, could be your Commander. It is definitely cheap enough. Uh, if they wipe the board, okay, gain two, take two. Of course, when you're at 40 life, that's less of a thing. Um, I hope it'll see standard play. Uh, like I said, my pet colors uh, are kind of black and white. I do like this guy. Uh, if black-white control or even esper control becomes a thing, uh, this is definitely a good card to play in the mirror. Very good card to play in the mirror against a control deck. Um, or even just if your opponent is playing a control deck, it's just a good card. I, I want to play with it, so I want to see standard play, so I'm a little bit biased, but I certainly hope it does. Commander, definitely as well, of course. Limited for When we're talking about competitive standard formats and possibly seeing play, it's definitely really good in uh, your constructed, or sorry, in your sealed formats, too. There are less non-creature spells in sealed formats, but with this you're going to have vehicles, which you're going to take up. Um, so you normally have roughly 17 creatures. If you play a vehicle, I would say it's kind of, I, I personally counted it as kind of half creature, half non-creature spell when I was doing my math for that. So I played three vehicles, so it was like one and a half creature, so okay, I played, played 15 or 16 creatures instead. So that's why I did my math for Leonard, maybe you did it different, but I, I like this guy, hope he sees play. Uh, speaking of vehicles again, we have Fleet Wheel Cruiser. 
This is Forged Eric Mana for an Artifact Vehicle. Uh, when it comes a creature, it is a 5-3. It has Trample and Haste. When it enters the battlefield, it becomes an Artifact Creature until end of turn and has a crew of 2. So this is the cost, this is the crew I want to be paying for my vehicles as crew 2. When the turn it comes in, you don't have to pay for its crew at all. Um, which is really nice, because that's the downside of vehicles, right? You have to pay the crew, this you don't. Um, with this guy, uh, with its crew 2, with your various crew mechanics, Keep in mind, when you crew something, it can be at instant speed, right? Um, so there's a card that gives crewed vehicles, the, vehicle, the vehicles that it crews first strike, you can do that at instant speed. You can turn this into a 5-3 first strike, okay? Okay, so I have that guy out here. I'm going to play the Fleet Wheel Cruiser, attack you with it. Okay, uh, you're going to block with your 5-5, five, five. okay, boom, I'm going to give it first strike. You can do that at instant speed, so a very important thing to keep in mind if you're playing with vehicles. But this guy, I do like it, if there's a vehicle deck, it's going to be in there. Uh, we have Aetherflux Reservoir, 4 generic mana for an artifact. Whenever you cast a spell, you gain one life for each spell you've cast this turn. So, Storm? Storm already has its win cons. Uh, maybe this is a sideboard card for them. Maybe. Um, commander, though, I can definitely see as some commander also. But uh, So pay 50 life. Aetherflux Reservoir deals 50 damage to target creature or player. I love that it says creature, first up. Um, but to me, if I'm casting that many spells, uh, so my first spell I gain one life, second spell I gain two life, third spell I gain three life. So I've cast three spells and I gain six life. So because it grows exponentially like that, or arithmetically, like it doesn't go one, two, four, it goes one, two, three. So because it grows like that though, it's not just one, 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 it's not one life for each spell, it's one life for each spell you've cast this turn. Very important thing to remember. Uh, but I don't know what standard, it's a really build around card for standard. Um, definitely Commander, love it. Um, possibly Sideboard, Modern-ish for Storm, maybe. Format has a lot to pay for something in Storm, though, so. Uh, we got our Legendary Land, and another story card, Inventor's Fair. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you control three or more artifacts, I'm just gonna, if any of the cards going forward, I'm gonna call that Metalcraft, because that's what it is. <laughs> you gain one life. You can tap it to add a colorless, specifically colorless, uh, mana to your mana pool. For generic mana, tap, sacrifice, adventure sphere, search your library for an artifact card, reveal it, put it into your hand. Then shuffle your library. Activate this ability only if you control three or more artifacts. So, I do like this card. If it's going to see play, it's not going to be as a four of because it is a legendary land, right? Uh, and it just produces colorless. I could see being like a two of in artifact heavy decks where they want that tutor effect. But, so I can see, I can see play, seeing play in standard because it is a powerful effect, right? By the time you have four mana, I'm gonna, okay, in your turn, I'm going to sack this, go find my big Gear Hulk, or whatever it is, play it, blow up the board, because it's probably going to be the Cataclysmic Gear Hulk, and just win the game. Speaking of not winning the game, Key to the City! Uh, limited, it's really good, not saying it's not. The Key to the City is two generic mana for an artifact, and has tap, discard a card, up to one target creature can't be blocked this turn. Whenever Key to the City becomes untapped, you may pay two generic mana. If you do, draw a card. Um, so this guy, the thing is, in standard, you want all of your cards to have worth. Uh, so for tap and discard a card, I want that to be in a Madness deck. Because um, I want to get my Madness stuff for cheaper. If there's a, not a Madness deck out already, I don't think there will be one, is the thing. Um, Granted, it makes something unblockable. Maybe you make your giant 6-6 six, six unblockable swing for the win. But if all this does is discard your cards, it may not be worth it. I'd rather have a spell that makes something unblockable. Slip through space. Because then I get to make something unblockable and, just, and draw a card anyway. Right? Um, so because of that, I think there's other options for this. I don't think you'll see competitive play. Other formats, um, again, Kitchen Tables, definitely an awesome card for that. Uh, where it's a little more casual, right? Bristling Hydra is a 2 generic mana and a 2 green for a creature Hydra. There's a 4-3. When it enters the battlefield, you get 3 energy. Pay 3 energy, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on Bristling Hydra. It gains Hexproof until end of turn. So, one trap that I saw people falling into with this guy, and the pre-release anyway, was people playing it. Oh, I get 3 energy. Next turn, okay, I'm gonna pay 3 energy, put a counter on, attack you. Ma ha So, okay, I'll take 5. Then your next turn, you wouldn't have any energy, and they would just kill him. Uh, so, what I, I think it, it's a good card, uh, maybe standard, but the fact that it just does itself, it's it's fringe competitive standard playable, because um, there's better cards for our aggressive green red deck, I think. But anyway, um, when you're playing this guy, in my opinion, you save this energy 
Um, if your opponent's tapped out, okay, yeah, pump them up. Do some more damage. But I want to save this energy personally uh, for a time when I can save him. If my opponent goes to block it with a 3-3, a three, three, okay, I'm going to pump it up so it lives through that block. If my opponent goes to kill it with a spell, okay, I'm going to make it hexproof so it can't be the target anymore. Um, that's how I want to use that energy, so, but each to their own. So, uh, this guy, good card, fringe standard, I don't think so, unless somebody really builds around it, though. Like, green-blue energy, I see potentially being something, uh, with that flyer that gives you energy equal damage. Damage does and it's trample, so maybe, but I'm not too sure on it right now. Uh, we have Multiform Wonders, a five generic mana for an artifact creature construct. Uh, when Multiform Wonder enters the battlefield, you get three energy. Plays with their, nicely with our Hydra. It is a 3-3. Three, three. You can pay a generic mana, or sorry, not a generic mana, you can pay one energy to give it uh, your choice of Flying, Vigilance, or Lifelink until end of turn. Keep in mind, you can do that as many times as you want to give it all those abilities. Of course, Lifelink just triggers once, so if you give it Lifelink five times, you just gain the greater amount of life. Uh, you can also pay an energy. Multiform Wonder gets plus two, minus two, or minus two, plus two until end of turn. So if you give it Lifelink and Flying, because you want to chunk in there for five and gain five, you can do that. But or you can tup, uh, pump its toughness infinitely as long as you have energy, right? So, uh, good card uh, because it's such a heavy investment of your energy, though. I don't know if it'll see play. Uh, it gives you tons of options, which is a good card. But you, it's a big energy sink. Like over, you can easily spend six energy over two turns. So, uh, even a big energy deck, uh, it's a good card for them. But outside of that, uh, I don't know. So we have Authority of the Consoles. One white mana for an enchantment. Uh, creatures your opponent control enter the battlefield tapped. All right, good stuff. Uh, whenever a creature enters the battlefield under opponent's control, you gain a life. So this turns uh, makes your opponent's vehicles much less threatening. So if they just have a couple vehicles on board and they play a creature, your creature enters tapped so it can't crew those things. Um, this is a tur monster turn one play in limited. Uh, in that black-white deck I was talking about making, I want to put two of these in there. This is late game, it's not as much of a thing uh, if I'm trying to dig myself out of a hole. But uh, early game, uh, the life gains can be more than relevant uh, over over the course of a game. Uh, and the creatures entering tapped is going to be big, um, both for vehicle recruiting purposes and just getting in some attacks. Um, so yeah, good card. I like it. I think it'll see standard play, uh, like competitive standard play. Just, uh, I'm a fan. You have Master Trinketeer. It is two generic mana and a white. Uh, for a creature dwarf artificer, that is a 3 2, and servo and thopter creatures you control get plus 1 plus 1. Uh, so, 3 generic mana and a white create a colorless servo artifact creature token. So, he can build and pump his own army. In a white black or white green token deck where you're getting things like this, um, definitely gonna be a big card for that. So, you get this, maybe one or two of these guys, it's not legendary, so these can sack. Um, you get this, and Chief of the Foundry, and you can quickly have an army of 4-4 four, four Thopters and certain moments out. Um, in Origins draft, I drafted a couple of Chief of the Foundries and the Thunderclap Wyvern that pumps your flyers for plus one, plus one, and I very quickly had 5-5 five, five and 6-6 six, six Thopters, so it can definitely be a thing. So, I like the card. Could see play if uh, uh, there's a Fabricate deck out there, so... So, Toolcraft Exemplar is one white mana for a creature dwarf artificer, 1-1. One, one. At the beginning of combat on your turn, if you control an artifact, Toolcraft Exemplar gets plus 2, plus 1, so it turns into a 3-2. Uh, definitely good numbers for a 1-drop. Until the end of turn, if you control 3 or more artifacts, it also gains first strike in the end of turn. So definitely a really good, really efficient attacker. The thing you gotta watch, though, is that I read just ran into this in the pre-release, a few people did this, so you really gotta read, at the beginning of combat on your turn, it gets plus 2, plus 1. So on your opponent's turn, this guy's a 1-1. One, one. This guy's a 1-1, one, one, vanilla, bleh, that's it. On your opponent's turn. So you're gonna, if you're thinking, okay, I'll hold back my 3-2 first striker, yeah, I'll hold him back because I want to block stuff. Nope, he's a 1-1. One, one. And it'll be in combat on your turn, on the controller's turn. So you really got to watch that. Just, uh, my opponent did that once at the pre-release. I'm like, uh, no, he's just a 1-1. One, one. Um, so you got to just, and then somebody else did it the same day as well, so you really got to watch that. Just be careful for that. Um, we also got two captured by the consulates. We got a foil and a non. I'll let you look at the foil because it's pretty. Uh, we have enchant creature you don't control. Enchant creature can't attack. 
Whenever a opponent casts a spell, if it has a single target, change the target to Enchanted Creature if able. It is a three generic mana and a white for an enchantment aura. So if you have... Um, important thing you have to note, though, is the creature can still block, it can still crew vehicles, it's still on taps, it just can't attack, and if someone goes to murder or what have you, like targeted removal spell, you want a particular creature, it goes to this whatever creature this is on. Um, you do have to watch, though, because with things like the new Twin Bolt and there's Chandra's something else where it splits two damage, because those spells have two targets, um, those would not have to redirect. Right, so this is just if, it, if a... what's the exact uh, text on here? If it has a single target. So if they go... Uh, it doesn't have to start target a single creature if it has a single target. So if they go, okay, burn you for three, uh, no, you just burn your creature for three. Because that's a single target. That was they were just targeting me. Uh, if it's like, oh, or kill that creature, no, you just killed your creature. So, uh, but if it has, okay, do two to that creature and two to you, you're like, oh yeah, that goes off because that has more than a single target. So just watch out for that. Uh, next we have Sahili's Artistry. I thought this was the buy a box, but I was wrong. So it is four generic mana and two blue for sorcery. Uh, it says choose one or both. Create a token that's a copy of target creature artifact. Cool. You want to copy my uh, Aether Flux Reservoir? That's good. Uh, but it doesn't enter. Or sorry, wrong card. Yeah. Cool. Um, you want to copy my Aether Flux Reservoir, Panarmonicon? Cool. You get one. Uh, so, or uh, and or uh, create a token that's a copy of target creature, except it's an artifact in addition to its other types. So you want to copy my. Bristling Hydra, you get a copy of it. It's an artifact copy. You want to copy Kambal, you get a copy. It's an artifact copy. Um, I like this card because those copies no, do not exile at end of turn. You don't have to sacrifice them at the end of your turn. You just get to keep those. So for six mana, the same cost as your opponent's big bomb, you get that and something else as well, potentially. Like I said, if they don't have any artifacts, you don't, or you don't have any, you know, you don't have to copy stuff you don't have. But you get a copy of your opponent's big bomb. Limited, definitely real good. I like it. Um, I can see the scene play uh, in a control deck in standard, maybe as a one or two of, just to help against some of those decks that are playing those big bombs. And it'll get sided out against aggro decks and stuff, of course, right? But I like it. I think it'll see play. I hope so. Uh, now we are getting into our mythics. So we have first, Sky Sovereign Console Flagship. It is five generic mana for a legendary artifact vehicle that when it is crewed with crew three, it turns into a six five. It has flying. Whenever Sky Sovereign Console Flagship enters the battlefield or attacks, it deals 3 damage to target creature or planeswalker in opponent controls. So, new Nissa, for example. She comes in, your opponent plus ones her. Uh, this comes in, deals 3 to Nissa. Uh, or you can direct it and blow up another creature as well, but probably you want to deal 3 to Nissa before she ults. Um, then if you have that uh, creature that, when it crews things, it gives them haste, you can then just kill Nissa and hit your opponent for 6. Um, so it's not Infernal Titan, you can't uh, dome your opponent for a bolt, like with this guy. But definitely how it starts to blow up their board. Uh, if you can blink it uh, with Eldrazi Displacer, it gets real good. Uh, no Displacer's ability doesn't require it to tap. So what you could do is um, tap your Displacer to crew it, blink it, like tap your Displacer to crew it, attack, do three, the four blockers, blink it, blow up their, you know, it's... It's a good card. It's going to see standard play. I hope so. Um, I really like it. I want to put it in that my black white deck just because the, the three damage ability and the blinking three damage, three damage, three mana for three damage to a planeswalker or a creature that I can do a couple times a turn maybe is going to be real good. Uh, speaking of blinking things, these guys come first with Gear Hulk. It's combustible Gear Hulk. It's four generic mana and two red for an artifact creature construct. It is a six six with first strike. Uh, when Combustible Gear Hulk enters the battlefield, target opponent may have you draw three cards. If the player doesn't put uh, the top, if the player doesn't put the top three cards of your library into your graveyard, then Combustible Gear Hulk deals damage to that player equal to the total converted mana cost of those cards. So, of course, Magical Christmas Land, you play this, they're like, no, put them all in your graveyard, and you dome them for like ten, right? Uh, most of the time, though. Uh, Somebody did the math, there's a 6% chance of you just flipping over three lands if you're given, you know, 40% land count. Um, so most of the time, though, you're going to do three to five, depending on what you flip over, uh, to your opponent and have a 6-6 six, six first strike. You're not really going to complain about that. That seems good, and that's an Inferno Titan. That's a little bit better than Inferno Titan. You don't have the... Well, but again, um, 
all the Gear Hulks, if you can blink them, this is why I bought four Eldrazi Displacers, because Enter the Battlefield effects are a thing. Um, uh, so again, you blink this, you just keep doing that until you can just burn your opponent out just by flipping over cards. Uh, and of course, 6 6 First Striker is going to block guys all day, every day. Um, real good Gear Hulk, glad to have pulled it. I uh, really don't not like any of the Gear Hulks, uh, but this one is good, so awesome, good card. Speaking of, we have the Noxious Gear Hulk. It is a four generic man and two black for an artifact creature construct. It is a 5 4 with menace. When Noxious Gear Hulk enters the battlefield, you may destroy another target creature. If a creature is destroyed this way, you gain life equal to its toughness. So again, I know I'm starting to sound like a broken record, but blink it. Oh my goodness, blink it. Uh, so play this, kill the thing. Okay, maybe they swing a couple more guys. Uh, I blink it twice on my next turn, kill two more things, gain another seven to ten life, uh, and have a five four menace plus whatever else I had on the board left. Seems good. Um, yeah, good card. Gonna see play in my black deck. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but I love it. Uh, Metallurgic Summonings is three generic mana and two blue for an enchantment. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, we create an XX colorless construct uh, artifact cre creature token where X is that spell's converted mana cost. So notice it's not star star, it's XX. So you play a four, co four cost uh, instant or sorcery, you get a four four. It's always a four four, that doesn't vary in any way. Uh, you may then pay three generic mana and two blue to exile it, return all instant and sorcery cards from your graveyard to your hand. Activate this ability only if you control six or more artifacts. So two things to know about this. One is this is stackable. It is not legendary. You can have two or three of these out if you want and get two or three XX features for every instant or sorcery you play. And then just sacrifice one to get them all back. And you still have one or two left and then it just seems good. This uh, I think is going to see play in some control decks. I'm not a big control player so don't take me my word on that necessarily but um, I really like this card. It just gives a win con to control decks who just want to be super dedicated control, right? So, um, love this card. Just, oh, I, I want to do things with that card. Um, so, our last card from, uh, what is it called? From Kaladesh. Nissa Vital Force is three generic mana and two green. For a Planeswalker Nissa, she enters at five loyalty. Her plus one says, untap target land you control until your next turn it becomes a 5-5 five, five elemental creature with haste. It's a still a land. So important thing to know with that plus one, usually these abilities have the land turning back into a land, not a creature, at the end of your turn. This lasts through your opponent's turn. So if you play Nissa into an empty board, she has a blocker through your opponent's turn. Uh, so that hopefully next turn you can alter. We'll get to that in a sec. Return to your permanent, uh, her minus three is return target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. Regrowth, nothing wrong with that. So you play this later on, you can regrowth one of your gear halts back to your hand, what have you. Um, her minus six, so she minus six, her alt is her next turn. She comes out plus ones, alt's next turn. Big, 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 awesome, love it, great. Uh, so minus six is you get an emblem with whenever a land enters a battlefield under your control, you may draw a card. This is exactly what control decks have wanted. This is why I think green-blue could possibly become a thing, because your control decks just got that much better. You have your green-blue fast land. You have this, which turns all your future lands into, like, yes, control decks want to have lots of land, but this lets you draw to other stuff. This lets you find your counter spells off your lands. Ah, bleh, that's what, that's what control players have wanted for a long time now. Uh, anyway, awesome card. Obviously, Planeswalkers are just, other than Tybalt, uh, <laughs> Planeswalkers are just awesome pull. Love Nissa. So I know I said that that was the last card from Kaladesh, because technically the next card was not originally printed in Kaladesh. Uh, we did get an invention. I was really excited. If you watched the old video, you saw me got really excited to get it. Um, this is one of the inventions I did want to pull, because I want to put it in some of my modern decks. Um, I feel real there. Oh, wait, here. We're going to put this in a sleeve right now, actually. One second. We'll do the epic reveal. We got an Aether Vial Invention. Um, so I was really excited. I'm being super careful with this. Uh, as Aether Vial is one generic mana for those who don't know what it does. Uh, for an artifact that at the beginning of your upkeep, you may put a charge counter on Aether Vial. Then you may tap it, and you may put a creature card with converted mana cost equal to the number of charge counters on Aether Vial from your hand onto the battlefield. So you can instant trick out a creature 
Uh, trigger a Lord. Uh, like in my local meta, Merfolk is a thing, so they can trigger one of their Merfolk Lords, pump their team, and just makes combat super tricky and not fun. Uh, important note with these guys, you can't play them in standard, but you uh, can play them in any format they were already legal in, or if you open lucky enough to open one in your draft or sealed pull, you can play it in there as well. But uh, yeah, so that is our last. Put that in right in dead center, the maple leaf there. That is our last mythic, or sorry, our last rare or mythic rare card that we opened from our box. Um, if you guys want to, uh, if you guys enjoyed, uh, please like, share, subscribe, um, do everything you can to tell people that we exist. If you like to follow down on twitch.tv slash Dave865, we stream on there, Magic Online, other games. Uh, there we go. Or follow it at Dave2619. We also mention on there when we're going live on Twitch and new videos and stuff. If you guys, again, if you guys liked it, please um, like, follow, share, subscribe, all the awesome things that you can do to uh, help people promote uh, my channel, Magic Gathering, anything else I share on my channel, probably some Warhammer stuff, some gaming stuff. Um, yeah, so thanks for hanging out, guys. Uh, good luck in your pulls for your boxes, uh, and have a good day.